just on the inside door of his refrigerator, just in the in the box that it came in, and you know, a surprise that it was right there, kind of out in the open. French police began investigations into Festina after banned drugs, including steroids, were found in one of the team cars on July 8th. Festina's doctor, Eric Reichardt, was questioned and later charged under France's Anti-Drugs Act. The team's director... As the 1998 Tour de France got underway, the lid was blown off systematic doping in the peloton. It was pretty clear that there was a, a major problem. Uh, you know, the French police are arresting uh, team uh, members or, or followers with industrial quantities of uh, doping substances and uh, equipment. In the start house now is Lance Armstrong. The following year, the Tour de France was billed as the Tour of Renewal. Teams were terrified of being raided, but Lance Armstrong came prepared with a delivery man in tow called Moto Man. Motor Man was this gardener slash handyman for Lance Armstrong. The, the team I was on didn't carry performance enhancing drugs. So to, to get EPO for the Tour de France, we came up with a plan. And the plan had Moto Man involved where he, uh, he would follow the race, um, always stay, stay within probably a half hour drive of our motorcycle drive from our hotel. He basically had the you know, container filled with EPO and he would basically just wait for a phone call on a secret phone, and um, when he had to do a delivery, he'd do a delivery. And Armstrong coming up now. Now, can he get off to a great start in the Tour de France? He is aiming at eight minutes and nine seconds. He's certainly ahead of Chris Paul, but at this point, my goodness me, 802.51. Lance Armstrong, with that performance, Paul, I think may have done enough. This is where the legend began. On the very first day of his comeback Tour de France, Lance Armstrong won the prologue. Lance Armstrong has delivered a great blow. Three weeks later, less than three years after being diagnosed with cancer, he won his first Tour de France. It would be the first of seven. He came back again and again and again, winning tour after tour, and he did it seven times. And of course, it's a record, and nobody's ever done it. And it's, uh, for many people, it was unacceptable. It was impossible to do that. Uh, without taking drugs. Well, what do you think? I... Look, I, I admit I have, I've been very proud to commentate on Armstrong over these, over these years because I've seen a man and I've seen how he's battled the elements and I've seen how he's come forward and I'm very sad. What do I think? Everybody else did it. So I find it very difficult uh, not to think that Lance did it. The evidence suggests Lance Armstrong was doping big time. Tyler Hamilton says that after finishing a stage, he, Armstrong, and their teammate Kevin Livingston would inject themselves with EPO in the team's camper just meters from the excited fans outside. That was nerve wracking because you're right there in the heart of the Tour de France, you know. Thousands and thousands of people around, around your, hovering around your, uh, the team camper and we had this performance enhancing drug so I remember just trying to get rid of it as quickly as possible because you know there was one for Lance one for Kevin and one for myself and you know you quickly just stuck it in got rid of it uh, and then it was uh, quickly hidden away typically in like a coke can all three uh, vials would go into a coke can and would crush it give it to a team doctor to dispose But it didn't all go to plan. Lance Armstrong was tested for drugs during the tour, and one of his samples revealed a significant level of a banned corticosteroid. Emma O'Reilly was a soigneur on the team, whose duties included giving Armstrong a massage after his rides. During one of these massages, she says, an urgent discussion took place between Armstrong and the team's management. The conversation that was occurring really was, what are we going to do? Here's the problem. We need a solution. And how do we act upon the solution? And are we happy with the solution? So it was, the problem was, Lance had tested high in the cortisone. The solution was a potential um, um, prescription. What was the prescription for? Why was he taking it? 
Are we all happy with that? Yeah, we're happy with that. Right, let's go down, then and speak to Luis, who's the team doctor, and get him to write the prescription. Dr. Luis Del Moral has now been issued with a lifetime sporting ban by the US anti-doping agency, USADA. Emma O'Reilly says the doctor issued a prescription to Armstrong for a cortisone cream for saddle sores and backdated it. Had he complained to you about saddle sores? No, no, no. No, the, the, it, it wasn't about saddle sores. The whole thing was just a backdated prescription to help kind of explain his elevated cortisone level in the test of the prologue. Of course, if he, if he had been prescribed this cream, then it, it should have been listed as a ther on the Absolutely, therapeutic yeah. use exemption. Absolutely, yeah, and well, it wasn't because he wasn't taking the cream. You know, it was just purely backdated to cover up that cortisone elevation, yeah. The backdated prescription was rigged to suit the test. When she was subpoenaed to give sworn evidence, Emma O'Reilly insisted that her memory was clear. Is there any doubt in your mind as to what happened and what you heard? None whatsoever at all. I can still to this day picture the whole scene vividly. She was labeled a traitor by Lance Armstrong. Um, she was told she'd never work in the business again by the Armstrong group. Uh, we found her to be extremely credible on the issues in which, um, and the things she said she'd seen and done. Lance Armstrong escaped being sanctioned for having a banned corticosteroid in his system. In 2000, a test was introduced for EPO. Tyler Hamilton says that he and Lance Armstrong continued to dope using micro doses of EPO which would pass through the body more rapidly and an undetectable type of doping, blood transfusions. Under this procedure, blood would be taken from a cyclist, stored in a refrigerator and then reinfused at a later date, boosting the cyclist's red blood cells. That seemed kind of... Uh sort of caveman-like, you know, taking out your own blood and not seeing it for three or four weeks and then getting it back in, reinfusing it back in. Who was organizing all of that? Um, Lance and Johan Bernal and um, the Dr. Del Moral, Dr. Del Moral. Tyler Hamilton says that after stage 11 of the 2000 Tour de France, he, Lance Armstrong and Kevin Livingston had their blood reinfused. Everything was laid on by the US Postal team management. We were in this small hotel. It was pretty wild that I arrived in my room and it was, you know, the, team, the staff had sort of prepared everything, the doctors and um, there was a blood bag <coughs> up, taped up on the wall. Um, hanging from the wall and, you know, a red tube coming down, red, a tube filled with blood coming down and basically, you know, injecting me here. I, I have pretty small veins, so the one place that always worked was right there. And it's, you can see the scars today. Tyler Hamilton says the three riders lay on beds in adjoining rooms with an open door between them. Could you see Lance Armstrong? Yeah, yeah. You know, that's a question that's been asked a lot. Yeah, I saw him. I saw the, his bag of blood and, and saw it in his arm, yeah. They were taking a huge gamble. Um, I'm just, I'm glad we didn't get caught. You know, I would have been, we all would have been. Serious stuff, and like now looking back, oh my God. What was I doing? But you're so deep into it, you know, you don't even have time to stay, take a half step back and look at the big picture. Anything that would have In 2005, Lance Armstrong denied under oath ever having received a blood transfusion. You've never um, used your own blood for doping purposes, for example. Absolutely, that, that would be banned. Okay. I'm not trying to agitate you. I'm just trying to make sure your testimony is clear. OK. OK? All right. The whole point of blood doping is to increase the number of red cells in your circulation. 
the blood transfusions have the advantage of not being detectable. Even today, we don't have a foolproof method of establishing when an athlete has reinfused their own blood. So does that mean that athletes now and cyclists now are transfusing their own blood back into themselves? There's no doubt. There's no doubt that's happening. That same year, Lance Armstrong left the stage to huge acclaim, following his seventh straight victory in the Tour de France. But a month later, the EPO which Motorman had delivered during his first Tour victory came back to haunt him. So, In a sensational scoop in the French newspaper L'Equipe, Lance Armstrong was accused of lying about performance-enhancing drugs. And le mensonge Armstrong in French, um, it means that, yes, he's a liar, but all his story is a lie. Mm. All his story. Mm. Yeah, a double sense in French. What was the reaction? Damien Recio, an investigative journalist for L'Equipe, had written a story claiming the newspaper had proof that Lance Armstrong took EPO during the 1999 Tour de France. Sa victoire et la chute catégorique est sale. C'est-à-dire que nous avons prouvé à l'équipe qu'en 1999, il a gagné le Tour de France en prenant de l'EPO. C'est indiscutable. C'est scientifiquement indiscutable. D'ailleurs, lui-même ne l'a même pas discuté puisque lorsque j'ai sorti mon, mon travail d'investigation le concernant, aucun procès, aucun procès de sa part, alors que euh, M. Armstrong est, est entouré d'une vingtaine d'avocats en permanence, il n'a fait aucun procès à l'équipe, aucun procès à moi, il a juste dit « non, c'est pas vrai, je n'ai jamais pris de PO, c'est tout ». Mais nous savons, et c'est formellement avéré, qu'il a pris de PO en 1999. Lance Armstrong swears he has never taken performance-enhancing drugs and that in over 500 tests throughout his career, he never once tested positive. But the strongest scientific evidence that he was doping comes from this highly specialized French laboratory. Testers here found clear evidence of EPO in samples which were later identified as Lance Armstrong's. During the 99 tour, which Armstrong won, urine samples from the riders were sent to this lab on the outskirts of Paris to be tested. So, um, what is this room? This room is the EPO room. In this room, we perform the anti-doping analysis for EPO. Mm -hmm. At the time, a test for EPO was still not ready. For the EPO test? The test for detection of EPO was developed in this laboratory. So I personally performed the development of this taste. And it took a very long time. It, it took about six years to develop this taste. And it was ready in 2000. Four years later, as part of the lab's research, but not as part of a formal testing process, the 1999 samples were re-examined, and some were found to contain the banned drug. Six samples given by Lance Armstrong were found to contain EPO. Why was it only revealed years later that these samples belonged to Lance Armstrong? It was only a coincidence of events. Uh, a journalist requested from the cycling governing body, the UCI, to have access to some of Lance Armstrong's doping control forms. The UCI voluntarily gave all of Armstrong's forms from that race to the journalist, who then cross-matched the lab numbers that were on those forms with the samples that had been analysed quite separately by the laboratory, and he was the one that matched the lab numbers to the samples that contained EPO. The lines here are a delineation between... Mike Ashenden is a former independent expert for the UCI who helped develop a blood test for EPO for the Sydney Olympics. Which of these samples belongs to Lance Armstrong? Well, if we go to the doping control form, we see 160297. Oh. And that corresponds with this sample here, 160297. And we see that for that sample, there was 100% basic isoforms, which tells us that the system was flooded with synthetic EPO when that sample was provided. 
done. At what stage in the in the tour was that taken? That was the prologue. That was the first day of the '99 tour. Is there any doubt in your mind that the positive results for EPO were scientifically correct? Yes, they are scientifically correct. Do you know whether or not the samples which... When questioned about this under oath, Lance Armstrong put forward an alternative explanation. I, I can only believe that they either are not mine or have been manipulated because when I pissed in the bottle, as I told you earlier, having never taken performance enhancing drugs, when I pissed in the bottle, there was not EPO in that piss or urine. Lance Armstrong, when he criticized those results, alleged that maybe those samples had been spiked or manipulated. Is there any truth in that? No, it has no sense because uh, these analyses were performed for our research. Cycling's governing body, the UCI, has never sanctioned Lance Armstrong following the revelation by L'Equipe that six of his samples from the 1999 Tour de France contained EPO. How did the UCI react to these results? In a way that I feel ashamed of. Uh, rather than open their doors and say, let's try and understand what's going on here inside of our sport, they instead, as far as I could work out, tried to, to shut the case down. Should the UCI have acted on those results? In, in my view, uh, of course they should have. Uh, they had the power to, to say, all right, you doped, you're out. On one other occasion, the UCI chose not to act. In 2001, Tyler Hamilton alleges Lance Armstrong tested positive for EPO. Luckily, we had the right people on our side. The test occurred during that year's tour of Switzerland. Tyler Hamilton says Lance Armstrong's advisor on doping, the Italian Dr. Michele Ferrari, had told Armstrong to take micro doses of EPO to ensure he didn't test positive. USADA says that in all, Lance Armstrong paid Dr. Ferrari more than a million dollars for his doping advice. But on this occasion, it went wrong. He told me he had a positive test for EPO, which was very surprising because, you know, it seemed like it was foolproof. My understanding is that a sample had been provided and analysed by the laboratory, and they had found that there was evidence of synthetic EPO in that sample. The UCI says